welcome. Votes are in. And the message is clear. Change has come to Britain. Keir Starmer has been confirmed as the new Prime Minister after the Labour Party's decisive victory and in 14 years of Conservative rule. As the dusk settles on this historic election, Britain finds itself at a pivotal moment in its history. A nation standing at a crossroads. Behind lies a path strewed with the debris of failed policies and broken promises. The Conservatives are leaving office, but they're also leaving behind a country in disarray. From a crumbling NHS to a cost of living crisis that has pushed millions to the brink. The incoming government faces a Herculean task. The British people have spoken, and they've done so with a resounding voice. Yet, we cannot ignore the troubling undercurrent of this election, a voter turnout of just 60%, the second lowest since 1885. This apathy, this disengagement from the democratic process should concern us all. And while we celebrate the triumph of democracy, we must also confront an unsettling truth, the rise of the far right and racist parties that seek to divide rather than unite. Their growing presence is a stark reminder of the work that lies ahead in building a truly inclusive society. To those who stayed home, who felt their vote didn't matter, I implore you to reconsider next time. Your voice, your vote, is the lifeblood of democracy. It's the tool by which we shape our future, hold our leaders accountable, and push back against the forces of division and hate. Now, as Britain looks to the future under Labour leadership, they must temper expectations, be realistic. The mess left behind by 14 years of conservative rule cannot be cleaned up overnight. It will take time effort and patience, but with collective will and unity, change is possible. In the next coming weeks and months, we'll be closely following the new government efforts to tackle the myriad challenges facing the nation, from rebuilding the NHS to addressing the cost of living crisis, from tackling climate change to reshaping Britain's role on the global stage post-Brexit. The road ahead is long and fraught with obstacles. But as James O'Brien said earlier today, perhaps the most important thing is to reinstate decency and trust in the system. What, 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 what Starmer needs to do, and I don't mean in terms of policy, I don't mean in terms of waiting lists, or economic growth. I mean in terms of something that we touched on a couple of Thursdays ago, when we talked about the need to restore faith in politics, in politics itself, in public discourse, in democracy, and crucially in parliament. How does he do that? Because that's his first and arguably greatest challenge, is to turn this country back to a place where you could vote, your vote could not win. You could vote for a party that didn't govern, but you wouldn't feel that the party of government was uh, uh, alien to what you held dear. Uh, I don't know why I think of John Major quite a lot at times like this. Uh, the, the idea, you know, as someone who has always lent towards the Labour Party, John Major didn't feel like someone who wished us harm or who was going to prioritise personal wealth and ego and ambition over the national interest. Welcome. 
This is Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. And thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. So, elections. How are the <laughs> my people in the UK? How are you feeling for um, the Brits uh, that are outside of the UK? How are you feeling? And um, you know, it's, it's, I think if the Tories had, I don't know, if, if, if the election had gone another way, I would have been shocked and I would have thought, okay, what, what is in the water right now in Britain? Because I mean, 14 years and okay, I'm not going to get into their, their stuff, but 14 years, it's enough. It, it it really is, especially when, you know, the country is in, it's in the state that it's in. The thing that I worry about is, um, you know, after so much has happened and the mess that everything is, is in presently, that people will not give this new government, like, the patience and the time that they need. Like, because you have to remember, they are going in there now to freely find out what the books look like, right? And what the real, real um, issues that are happening. So you can't all of a sudden fix 14 years of bad management. It can't happen overnight. Right, it, 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 it's and th and this and this goes for anything, right? So, I would hope because what ends up usually happening in these uh, these cases is then you have the opposition party who will oppose everything. They will they will they will, they'll, they'll 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 try and nail you on every single point. Like three months from now, they'll say, well, you promised this and the NHS was going to blah, blah, blah. And where is the money? You haven't done anything. And you're like, you guys were in power the last time. What did you do for 14 years? I just got here. I'm only here for, <laughs> we're barely in our third month. And you're being a jack? Come on. But that spills over also because, sorry, it spills over also in people. People sometimes expect this, this rapid, quick turnaround. And I'm like, how do you expect them to fix 14 years of bad management or 10 years or whatever of the previous government? You have to give governments some grace, right? Especially depending on what they're trying to dig the country out from. One last thing about um, elections that I want to say that I want to make sure I say. Please vote. Please do not do not, I don't care, don't, don't give me an excuse, please go and vote. Even if you think it doesn't matter, it's not going to make a difference, even if you think they're all the same, please go and vote. last 14 years of Conservative rule. As we look back at this gaggle of obdurate, arrogant, stubborn, unrepentant, heartless, self-serving bunch of arseholes who have spent the last 14 years trying to keep their useless, megalomaniacal political party together while sleepwalking the country into a kitchen blender. 14 years, five prime ministers, seven chancellors, eight foreign secretaries, 13 culture secretaries, one of whom was Nadine Doris, a woman so stupid she thinks Channel 4 is a brand of perfume. Eight home secretaries, including grinning exorcist doll Pretty Patel, Sajid Javid, James Hilarious Rape Jokes Cleverly, and far-right pin-up Suella Braverman. Twice a woman who says multiculturalism has failed, even though her, Patel, Javid, Cleverly, Sunak, Kwartang, Zahawi, Badenoch are proof Proof that even if you do have brown skin, you too can become a vicious, festering, regressive, lying, greedy, nasty, eye-wateringly wealthy, but morally bankrupt, 
cunt. No fewer than 16 housing ministers, which explains why the UK is the most difficult place to find a home in the developed world. In 2000, a home cost four times the average salary. Now it costs eight times the average salary and workers are 11 grand worse off a year after 15 years of almost completely unprecedented wage stagnation. We've gone from 29 billionaires to 177 billionaires, whilst the working classes endured crippling austerity. The highest taxes in 70 years, lowest corporate taxes in 50 years. The rich are richer and the poor are much poorer and your average high street is boarded up. We've endured David Cameron's hubris, Theresa May's chaos, Boris Johnson's lies and Liz Truss throwing £30 billion of your money down the shitter. £100 billion in lost trade due to Brexit, £40 billion in lost tax revenues due to Brexit, whilst our farmers and our fishermen were sold down the river. The worst trade deficit since records began and our national debt is now at £3 trillion. Average student debt has gone from 5k to 50k. Homelessness has doubled, child poverty has tripled, an energy crisis that has little to do with the war in Ukraine and more to do with unfettered capitalism and unbridled greed. Highest energy bills in Europe, with 6.7 million people currently living in fuel poverty. The party of law and order have overseen record backlogs in the Crown Court, delays of five years for rape cases, with rapists being spared jail because the prisons are full. Chronic shortages of judges on top of a narrative that says they're all enemies of the people. They sold off 600 police stations. They cut police numbers by 21,000, then increased police numbers by 20,000, which is not an increase in police numbers, no matter how many times they tell you it is. Highest train fares in Europe, lowest state pension in Europe, uh, longest waiting lists in NHS history, a nation with rotting teeth and people being hospitalised with malnutrition and scurvy, billions of taxpayers' money wasted on PPE contracts for their rich mates and they let the bodies pile high and kill tens of thousands of pensioners during the pandemic and then they lied about it. They cut our armed forces. They closed and sold off our fire stations. They closed, then sold off our libraries. They didn't build those 40 new hospitals and they forced councils into bankruptcy. They wasted billions on HS2. They voted to allow bankers to have unlimited bonuses. They allowed BP and Shell to steal our oil and gas reserves without paying taxes, whilst Norway, of course, went the other way and has a sovereign wealth fund of over 1.6 trillion. And record amounts of our tammies and turds are being churned into our river and oceans by our privatised water companies. Windrush, Grenfell, Partygate, Barnard Castle, 30p Lee, bullying, affairs, groping and rape and tractor porn and Chris Pincher and corruption and dirty deals and racist donors and lies and lies and lies. And yes, the pandemic didn't help and the war in Ukraine hasn't helped. But don't believe them when they tell you that that's the reason that you are poorer this week than you were last week, whilst Rishi Sunak is richer this week than he was last week. Rishi Sunak cut taxes on champagne on the same day he cut funding to rebuild schools and he wants to bring back national service. What else are they going to bring back? Grandstand? Spam on the national health, Snickers going back to marathon. I look forward to voting these incompetent, hubristic grifters out. And I hope they spend a very long time in the wilderness and have a really good think about what they just did. Well, a trip down memory lane there with some highs and some lows from the last 14 years. A masterpiece in five minutes. That was just absolutely um, extraordinary. And um, it puts into focus, right, uh, what, what has 14 years of Tory government has brought the nation um, to this point. And I think it's a fair analysis. I don't, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's unfair at all. So... I, I just want to say one more thing, I guess, about voting and exercising your privilege and right to vote. I often hear people say, <clears throat> oh, well, I can't believe this government is doing this. Oh, I can't believe we can't do this anymore. Oh, I can't believe they did this. Oh, how could they even think about that? And my next question to those is usually... Well, did you vote? And if the answer is, well, no, 
I, 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 I don't say shut up and sit down, but I, I, I will give them a look and say, well, this is the result of you not voting. And the usual comeback is, well, one vote doesn't matter. Like, th this, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because you're not the only one thinking one vote doesn't matter. There are many others also that are thinking the same thing. Now, I, I, I completely understand the challenge when all things seem to be the same. But all things are not the same. And I know we have to be very strategic in certain ways because you, you have to uphold certain morals and values that, that one may hold very strongly, very, very, very strongly, and think, well, what, what a government might have done or the things that they might have supported, you, you, you may, and I'm trying to be coded here, you may say, I can't believe you know, I voted for this person or I voted for this party and they, they supported this thing or that thing, right? And one may swear and say, I am never voting this person again or I'm never going to vote for that party again because I can't believe what they did. Now, I fully understand that. <clears throat> but my take on that, as much as, as, as I hold that true, to my being, I have to also think about what the other options are. And if the other options are, let's say the option you have presently was, you know, they, 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 they took a limb, they, they cut off your arm, right? Let's say that's, that's, that's the people that we know, that's they, whatever they did, um, whatever they supported is equivalent to cutting off your arm right? But the other option or options that are available are telling you right now that they, they are telling you right now, if we get into office from day one, we're going to cut off your arm, cut off your legs, and um, we're going to take away all your rights to even speak, right? Let's just say those, 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 those are the options. All things are not equal. They're not the same, right? You have to think strategically. And I know this binary sort of option of voting for the worst of two evils, as people may put it. But you know what? It's still a choice. It's still a choice. I, I don't understand the idea of thinking, oh, well, well, this 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 government or this regime you know took my arm so i'm going to vote for the other the other people or i'm not going to go vote at all because not voting is a vote for the other party or the other person but the other party or the other person is saying to you we're going to do all these things they have it outlined and if you, if you still haven't figured it out yet, I'm talking about the upcoming U.S. Um, elections. Because this whole also project 2025 and, 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 and this, listen, folks, this stuff is serious, serious stuff. I don't, I don't live in the U.S., but everything the U.S. does has consequences and ramifications around the world. And as Canadian, as they say quite often here, if the U.S. sneezes, Canada catches a cold, right? Everything has consequences. And I, I, I know also, you know, they are pragmatic pr people who, who may think, well, they have this is a, 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 an imperial kind kind of process and, and, and they've done all these awful things around, around the world and I don't disagree. I don't disagree with you at all. But if these are my options, I'm not going to vote the option that is going to take my 
my arms away, my legs away, and 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 sew my my mouth up so I I don't I, I'm not able to um speak. Now, I I fully look. I'm not trying here to give anyone <laughs> to preach or anything like that. Um, you go with your consciousness and and do what you need need to get done um, ac accordingly. But for me, I find it also extremely extremely challenging to accept when I see people um, who are visible minorities who will stand there and support someone who they, they willfully ignore, willfully ignore what that person or that the policies or the people behind that person will do and have done. When you have a rapper who goes on stage and number one says that he's not black, that he's Italian and whatever else, fine, right? That that's your identity, that that's who you are. I'm not here to judge you. I I I look, I'm a I'm a multiracial person, and that's the last thing I I will I would ever do, right? Your identity is your identity. That's where you identify. Kumbaya. But then goes off to say, anyone is it, you know, I'm I am paraphrasing here. Anyone who's going to vote for for Biden, get out, get out. He doesn't want any Biden voters here. It's, it, it, it amazes me. It, it amazes me the mentality of superficialness. And it talks a little bit to me about, let's say, for example, I'm going to link these, these two things. So, so Mary Tillman um, the mother of um, Pat um, Tillman. This is in regards to the award that um, Prince Harry is receiving um, for the in Invictus Games. Listen, the I, I've, I've stayed away from 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 offering any kind of deep um, critique, and I, I easily can, right? Because they, there is a lot there that one can 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 criticize. And, you know, thinking about the motives behind what she said, what she said. Now, a couple of factors for me. A couple of factors is you have the media, right, that is just ready to exploit people and is ready to um, plug into a hateful narrative. And we all know what that is. So whether or not... Mary Tillman knew about anything or cared about anything. What we know for certain is that this so-called journalist went, interviewed her, right? And got whatever she needed in order to write the, 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 the poisonous piece that she wrote. And from there, other media, right? Because it's sort of like, they just plug into this central hub of hate, right? And it just, it's, it's like intravenous stuff. And it just then feeds out to the larger um, uh, media system that we have. And these are the newspapers and, and TV stations and news this. They, they pick it up because it, it causes controversy, right? Now... Her information, and this is Mary Tillman I'm speaking of, she might have not known A from Z about Prince Harry or about what an amazing work the Invictus Games does, how many lives it, 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 it has saved and changed, families, right? But she is going off of, and this is uh, uh, allegedly, I'm, not, I'm just saying, I, I don't know this happened for, for, for sure. But let's, let's picture that all she knew, perhaps, is what she's heard in the media, what she's probably read, and what now this reporter is feeding to her. So the normal outcome of what she is going to say is not that, Oh, well, he's the greatest guy in the world, and I think he deserved this award. She's, she, she's going to now spew out, right, repeat like a parrot, what she's heard and what's in, what's in her head. Because, let's face it, 
the media coverage of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex has not been stellar. And that's me being kind. So for anyone who's not fully involved in, in, in this sort of thing that we are, they're going to give you like what they've heard. For heaven's sake, my parents thought certain things. When, when, when I'm speaking to them and I was like, what? I'm like, no, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not what happened. Right? I mean, between us, my, my dad thought like, you know, that, that orange person was a good person, that, that he was effective. Why? Because my father only knows that person really from that show, The Apprentice. So the image that was portrayed in The Apprentice, my father thought, well, that's, that's, that, that's a decisive CEO. It's, it, it, he makes good decisions, blah, 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 blah. When I sat down with my dad, and I was like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's sort of re-educate you on all of this. He was like, holy, mm -mm, right? I'm not going to say what he said, but it was like, holy, mm -mm -mm. and he, he was like, that son of a, and I said, dad, you know, like, like you do understand how the media like trains us to, 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 to accept certain narratives. Anyway, that's beside the point. My point being is that these people then, right? She said whatever she said, right? I mean, she should have done some research before speaking, but you know what? I have given up on, on, on people being that diligent before they open their beaks and start speaking. Right, because I get enough of them in, in, in the comment section. I see enough of it even in, in conventional media. So much stuff that is said that can be so easily disproved if you just did a little bit of work. So she said what she said. Okay, whatever. It's created this, this big storm. But her, her source of information is polluted her source of her knowledge of whatever she's saying is not correct but now by by what she has said and given that interview look at what it, it's created what is created it's 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 basically it's it's it, it feeds into the people who already think this and it's giving them proof now and father to continue talking this nonsense, it's given conventional media another piece of sensationalism to talk about, right? So when I see or hear people who are visible minorities, whether they're rappers, singer, singer, artist, actress, entrepreneur, you know, the, 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 the orange head person said the other day he, he went to a black church. He went to a what? A black, he went to a what? A black church. What, a what? A black church. Now, forgive me, right, if I offend anyone here, but they show images of this black church, and I, I've, I've, I've been to black churches. And I'll tell you, I don't remember when I saw so many white people at a black church. I mean, there should be, because I, 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 I don't think that Sundays should be so segregated. I think we should all come together, and I think churches are a wonderful place. When you don't have a person stand on the pulpit preaching nonsense, right? But to have visible minorities and people of influence that our youth looks up to, and people follow, or take what they, their opinion into high esteem, say nonsense like, oh, well, you guys don't really know, like, really what he's all about, about, like, um, you know, like, he doesn't want everyone to have, like, that, you know, and if you guys really looked into his stuff, then you realize that all that stuff is, like, you know, and, like, I'm like, what? Look, look, look into what? Can you not put two and two, like, come on. When you have these, 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 these rappers, when you have these people of influence who are visible minorities, who, who, 
African American, color, black, whatever, Chinese, Asian, Latino, whatever you want to, whatever. Their policies and their crap is not for you. And do you think when these policies are like imp implemented that you're going to go to the front of the line and go, <laughs> excuse me, um, I, I, I voted for him, you know, and I promoted it. Um, <laughs> I'm not like the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're freaking punching the freaking ignorant face. And say, get at the back of the line, you, you, you so-and-so. Because that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. I got way too animated there and way too, like, ramped up. I'm closing this political segment now. Bam! Closed! Your dad, was he an attaché to Princess Diana? So yeah. she had gone to see Mother Teresa, and Mother Teresa turned around to Diana and said, if you want to go and see the loneliest people in the world, go and see, go and see the leprosy patients mm -hmm. in the local rehabilitation hospital, which was my father's hospital. She decided to kind of do a bit of a coup with a paparazzi, went to this hospital, took off her gloves. They just sort of let her come in, but she knew the paparazzi were behind her. So let them come into the hospital ward and then started touching every single hand of, oh and every God. face, woman. which blew the stigma off around the world on the front of the tabloids the next morning it was don't do it die and my father saw the press titles on the tabloids and called Kensington Palace and spoke to Patrick Jefferson who was her private secretary at the time and said I just wanted to pass on a message to say what she's done in five minutes we've been trying to do for 120 years Come and he on, went could you just hold the phone one moment and then the next voice was Diana's and she went Tony what you're doing out there is extraordinary how can I help but, um, I'm not emotional I'm not I don't have tears in my eyes right now I'm fine I'm good. Uh, center myself. Oh, that was good. Whew. Um. Okay. So there is this wonderful article in People Magazine uh, that was published on July fourth. Oh, July fourth. I forgot to ask you, folks. How was it, July fourth? <laughs> oh my gosh! I feel awful. How was everyone's July 4th? I hope you had a great time. I hope you barbecued and or or hang out with people you you like and and yeah. Sorry, it completely <laughs> I forgot. Well, I just hope you all had a wonderful um July July 4th. All right, let's get back to um people. So People magazine um did this art this article um highlighting Victor's games. Prince Harry, and um, sort of in 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 the spirit of him receiving the um, Pat Tillman Award. Okay, so let's let's have let's have a quick, a quick read of the um, of the article. How Prince Harry's Invictus Games are transforming veterans' lives worldwide. We're healing. It's been a lesson in serving a purpose greater than ourselves. The Duke of Sussex told People in 2022, by Janine Henney and Aaron Hill published on July 4th, 2024. Prince Harry is being honored for his impact on the veteran community through his Invictus Games Foundation. As this year's recipient of the Pat Tillman Award for service at the upcoming ESPY Awards, the Duke of Sussex, 39, says, this one is for our entire service community. After a decade in the British Armed Forces, including two tours in Afghanistan, Harry founded the Invictus Games in 2004 to empower wounded, sick, and injured servicemen and women through sports. The event has since become a worldwide phenomenon, changing the lives of soldiers in dozens of countries. I truly believe that we are at our best when we're in service to others, and Invictus is all about upholding that value, Prince Harry told People in 2022 a healing process. Garrett Kuwata of Team United States challenges Kurt Ludke of Team Australia for the ball in the mixed team semi-final match between Team United States and Team Australia during day two of the Invictus Games 2023 on September 11th, 2023 in Dusseldorf, Germany. Harry's a veteran, and like all vets, when we get together, we talk, laugh, joke, and tease each other. He's just like one of the guys, retired Chief Master Sangat Garrett Kawada, who competed for Team USA at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf, Germany in 2023, previously told People. He makes you feel like you've known him forever. 
I'm so grateful that Prince Harry put this together for us veterans to come together and use this as part of our healing process. And we are, we're healing because everybody is smiling, he added. A deeply personal cause. Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, patron of the Invictus Games Foundation on stage during the Invictus Games Foundation conversation titled Realizing a Global Community. It's a deeply personal cause for him. He makes himself really accessible to all the competitors. He is involved in every aspect of the games. Retired U.S. Army Captain Will Reynolds told People. Making a difference. Katie Kuyper of Team USA gets a kiss from Prince Harry at the road cycling event during the Invictus Games Orlando 2016 at ESPN Wide World of Sports on May 9, 2016 in Orlando, Florida. The Invictus Games are really important. They are really making a difference in people's lives, said Katie Kuyper, a former Army Staff Sergeant who served in Iraq and Guantanamo Bay Naval Base. Finding Connection. Heart of Invictus. L to R. Gabriel Gabe, George, and Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, in Heart of Invictus. Every conversation that I've had with him has been just like I'm talking to a friend, a brother, maybe because of the military connection that we have. Gabriel Gabe George of Team USA told people of connecting with the Duke of Sussex. We share where we just left off. The conversation just continues to go on. A journey of recovery. Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex attending the final day of the one year to go event before the Invictus Games Vancouver Whistler 2025 and go curling at the Vancouver Curling Club at Hillcrest Community Center in Vancouver, Canada. He's genuinely interested in your journey. His focus is on understanding the athletes. It's about recognizing those embarking on a journey of recovery. That's what drives him. Mike Bourgeois, who served as a member of Canada's archery team at the 2020 Invictus Games in the Netherlands, told People. A greater purpose. Dusseldorf, Germany, September 11. Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, attends the wheelchair rugby competition during day two of the Invictus Games. Creating the games involved listening to military and veteran families and hearing directly from them about their lives. And that offered so much perspective. It's been a lesson in serving a purpose greater than ourselves, and the benefit that comes from that extends to both the individual and the community, the Duke of Sussex told People in 2022. In a world where trust is fragile and loyalty is tested, one brother has the charisma and heart to win over the people, while the other, with all the money and power, hides his true intentions. Two brothers, one mission, keep the memory of their beloved mother alive. Who will emerge victorious when family ties are put to the ultimate test? Coming soon, prepare for the unexpected. Is it a comedy? Maybe a drama? No, a period drama. A tragedy. The film that will keep you guessing. Brotherhood, betrayal, battle. This December 22nd, coming to a theater nowhere known. Brothers, same, same, but different.
Okay, so I hope you folks enjoy that. Um, this is how this is how my brain works. Um, the this whole trailer thing um, idea came to me because I was trying to come up with a creative way to show Willie on the scooter. <laughs> I'm not even joking, okay? <laughs> so I saw the pictures with Willie on the scooter and I kept thinking, okay, I'm going to include this in, 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 my, um, in the episode. And I kept going back and forth, okay, how can I make this creative? How can I introduce this but be creative about it? And back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then I was lying in bed and I'm lying there and all of a sudden it's like, well, what if we do like... It's like a movie trailer and we'll be like, yeah, like, da -da -da -da, like two brothers trying to achieve something and they have a race and Willie uses a scooter and <laughs> I'm coming up with these ideas. And then finally, well, this is the product that um, I ended up with. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had... I had fun putting it together, but it's like so much time halfway through it. I kept thinking, okay, <laughs> you're spending half a day getting this done just because you're looking for a creative way to introduce <laughs> two pictures with Willie on a scooter. You are crazy. You are crazy. And I am crazy. I am crazy. Well, I really do hope you enjoyed it because... Um, I kind of liked it. At the end, I, I did. I, I, I was like, actually, it turned out okay. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. But you know, one of the things that, in all seriousness, one of the things that I, I think in, in, in a previous episode, I had mentioned about my um, brother and how he was upset at me because he's really good at sports and I, I wasn't. And then I, I, there was this one sport I, I actually became really good at and he got upset because he thought I was infringing on his territory because he's not good at academics at all. And I was pretty good at academic stuff. Anyways, I think, and this is just me speaking out loud here. I think one of the big mistakes that Prince William makes is trying to emulate, imitate, envy, or whatever, his brother. I think that one one should you know with that relationship of sibling if you're able to to, to to do that is to celebrate enhance that which your sibling does really well right or is really good at because there's going to be things that you are really good at and those are the things that you should be enhancing in yourself like for example i kept thinking as i was looking sort of Prince, Prince, Prince Harry has this naturalness about being a dude, right? Being like a guy guy. And he has this, this really natural way of, of, of kind of drawing you in. He has that thing we call charisma. William, to me, I, I don't know the man, but to me, he looks more like a reserve, a little bit more distant kind of person. I, I, I would play up on that. I really would. If I was his advisor, I would say, listen, let's have your brother be sporty. Let's have your brother be the tough one, army one, all this stuff. We're going to make you the James Bond. We're going to make you sort of like elegant, right? Martini. We're going to make you um, be Monte Carlo. You know what I mean? Sort of, sort of the, but that doesn't take away that we will put you and do sports like maybe sailing if you're good at it. I think William was really good at water polo or something like that, right? Maybe we can do that instead or show more stuff of you playing polo, like the one with the horse, not the one in the water. So, but, but they put him in these situations, like he was standing in front of that helicopter. The uniform is ill-fitted. His, 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 the way he's standing, his um, feet are inwards. It already makes the picture of him looking kind of weak, right? The way his stance is, all of it. 
why don't you just throw Harry in front of a helicopter and he just looks like he belongs there. So just enhance the things that you're good at and celebrate the things that your brother is good at. And then vice versa, if you have a good relationship. Because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, when, when, when I found out why my brother was upset at me, the next day, the next day I wanted to school, I went up to coach and I was like, I'm quitting. <laughs> my coach was like, what? Why? I said, yeah, I, I don't think I want to do this anymore. It's like, well, Antonio, you kind of, I said, no, 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 I'm not doing it. I said, I can't. My, my, I, ha I have asthma. Actually, I did say I have asthma and I don't have asthma. And he's like, no, you don't. I said, okay, I don't. <laughs> I was like, but, but I, I, I can't do it. And he's like, hey, look, why? And I said, I can't give you a reason. I just, I just, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I have other things I, I'm more interested in. And that was true. I had other things that I was more interested in, but uh, he just has, he just needs to stop. Just, just get, get better marketing people. Stop trying to do everything you see. This, this cosplay kind of attitude, everything Harry and Megan does and the other two do. No, I'm sure, I am sure that Catherine is good at something, right? She must be, everyone is good at something. So find that something that she's good at and, and, and get her to do that because she'll feel natural in that environment. I mean, if they're still married or they stay married, I don't know. <laughs> so... All of that, folks, that entire trailer, <laughs> just for that, just for that. Um, and the article from People magazine was pretty good, right? I thought it was a really good way also to educate perhaps people who are not, you know, in, uh, um, have the knowledge of the extent to what the Invictus, Invictus Games does and how important it is. All right, let's get on to a little bit more news and then we'll wrap this up because I need to get this posted today. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get it posted today. All right, and this is right out of Hello Magazine. Um, it has the sort of headline of Duchess Sophie is straight from a fairy tale in defined Cinderella gown. Prince Edward's wife attended a garden um, party hosted by King Charles and the, um, the consort. And what do you folks think? Does she look like Cinderella in that gown? You know, I, I, I looked at it and I thought, no, that, that's no, no. Like the top is kind of okay. I think the bottom part, though, I would have done something different. Like, no. N together, no. Pass. And look who is out and about, I guess, after whatever has happened behind closed doors. The Middletons are finally being seen again in public. Well, I mean, they were in at the beach and stuff, and the other one was doing whatever he was doing. Anyways, that's not my point. Marka, um, Carol Middleton turns on the style at Wimbledon after Kate Middleton makes social media statement. The mother of the Princess of Wales stepped up to her duty. Is it, is it her duty to go to Wimbledon? When did that happen? And this was in People magazine. Kate Middleton sends surprise personal message to Andy Murray as his incredible Wimbledon career ends. Princess Kate has attended Wimbledon every year since marrying Prince William, except for in 2013 when she was pregnant with Prince George. And her message basically was um, an incredible Wimbledon career comes to an end. You should be very proud at Andy Murray. Now, here is something I have a question for you folks about. Was, was, was this because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit lazy right now and I need to get this out to you folks, <laughs> so I'm not going to go look. Wasn't there an issue with her supposedly flirting with some tennis player last year and the wife got all upset? Was it Andy Murray that she was flirting with 
or he was flirting with her or some crap like like that i've got a question here's my question what well, i guess this is the second question why does the media because now <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to see how i can phrase this question why do they always seem to hint or to try and and and, and give this impression that kate is 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 like in 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 some kind of situation with someone else because they do it with with harry right when you know it was it it was the trio i mean the insinuations were 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 there you know and the whole thing about oh she stays up late to call harry at midnight or you no know, just the two of them can talk and she's so hurt by what has happened and oh now she's like sick and oh my god like why isn't harry coming to see her like it's bizarre and then this whole thing with her and and, and last year i'm going isn't she married to the future king like if that was my wife I'm sorry. I'd be like, um, what, what, excuse me? Do you think Harry would be like, yeah, you guys can insinuate that my wife is like, whatever. He would be like, listen, no, no, I think not. No, no. So it's, it's so bizarre, eh? Okay, next. And we're still on this. So in the New York Post, a great publication. Prince Harry needs to do honorable thing and turn down Pat Tillman Award. Expert. Yeah, expert says that, right? Written by Lauren Stat. What? Um, who cares? Simmer. I was, I think it was last week um, on one of those shows that the Daily Fail has on TV where they have the panelists and, you know, um, Ricardo is on it and whatever her name is and whatever the other person's name is and the other person. So um, she asked a question should should harry meet with like <laughs> i don't know why i'm going to the valley girl voice but should harry meet with mary tillman and the one i don't know panelist or so-called expert she said well yes he should because you know she is a nice woman and she's like totally like would like listen to him and maybe you know he can explain to her like blah blah blah, blah. And i'm like no he should not sit down I think not. Mm -mm. No, no, eh, eh. no, no, no. As 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 the senior marketing publicist here, I am saying, say no, please. The answer is no, 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 not today, no, not tomorrow, no, 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 no. The answer is absolutely no. Right? Like, give me a damn break. Now, on the same. Um, <laughs> On the same panel, Miss Thing, no, this there's not there's no Ricardo I'm talking about. I'm talking to the other one, Miss Thing. Um because <laughs> the only one I'm gonna name is Ricardo. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other ones I don't care to like say their names. So she said <laughs> she said she's like, so the question was, well, don't the royals receive like awards or whatever? And she's like, well, um, um, well, no, you see, the awards for them, because they, they are royalty, the award for them is that they do public service. And the public service that they do, that they work for, that is reward for them. So they don't at all receive, yeah, maybe perhaps one time, uh, 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 with, the, with the Prince of Wales, since William, may, maybe there was one time he received an award or another for, 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 for environmentalness. And then, uh, 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 shut up. I'm like, shush, give me a headache, woman. Gosh. Uh, you sit there uh, sentinomiously, and I know I'm saying that word incorrectly. <laughs> Just fueling a bunch of S-H-I-T coming out of our mouth. I'm like, how hard did you have to rehearse that answer? Like, how hard did you rehearse it? Number one, you folks are quick to say they're not working royals. They're not working royals. They're not working royals. Well, then, they're not working royals. Therefore, if 
someone wants to give him the award for the most good looking people that ever existed on planet earth they should go receive it if they receive the better looking couple marriage in all of royalty ever they should go and get their award they should get all of it and they should show up give a little speech and say thank you and move on because remember they are not working royals therefore you can't you can't do this double standard nonsense remember remember what the other one said she said she goes well we can't we cannot expect to ask people to to respect Catherine's privacy if 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 at all corners we we, we, we don't ask the same for, 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 for Megan, you see. Then, then we, we look like hypocrites. I was like, did she just say you, they look like what? Like who? I'm like, did she just had like a little bit of wisdom thrown in her face? Damn hypocrites. Give me a damn break. And, and it's the same freaking line, right? It's the same thing. This, that, that, that drum beat that they go by. Damn freaking poison. Poisonous. All right. So I'm going to close this off with a juicy one. Okay. It's like, it's like maybe they had it in storage and they just decided to, um, you know, or someone called someone and someone said to someone, I need you to put this here and I needed to say this so that someone can look like the benevolent person that she is so here we go for marca um, kate middleton received camilla's firm orders regarding prince george and princess charlotte's behavior and they have worked it only took camilla one incident with kate middleton to show her the way all right so i already have to interject here so let me see so camilla the whole, the, 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 infant, no, the, the, uh, tamp okay, no, no, I shouldn't say that. The, um, okay, the lady, she's not a lady though. Um, the, per yeah, okay, person, okay, that is the person who did not kick Princess Anne, right? It wasn't her. I don't know, some people were saying it was her. Like they had a little kerfuffle in the garden somewhere and she kicked Princess Anne. Princess Anne ended up in the hospital and she's she kind of lost her memory. She didn't. We're not sure. I don't know. Maybe they're preparing for something bigger later so she can easily say, I lost my memory. Remember, Camilla kicked me, but it's not Camilla. No. Okay, fine. Let's move on from that story. Not Camilla. That is a statement we're making. It was not Camilla. But... So you're telling me between us that, that her, the consortium, is giving instructions to the future queen concert? Um, so is the negotiations kind of done and finished with? Like, what's going on? Because, like, what I'm thinking is i'm listen folks i am talking while i'm staring at the same photo you guys are staring at she just looks special doesn't she and she always does that like that side eye thing there's a picture i'm going to find it and post it also where she's looking at prince george and i can almost if i was like you know if i had that energy that 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 weird dark arts energy i can tell you exactly what she's thinking but you know i can just imagine i'll, I'll keep it that way and i'm sure you folks can imagine also all right so the article goes on to say at queen elizabeth the second funeral i can't say it went on Camilla stepped in when a moment of sibling discord unfolded between Prince George and Princess Charlotte. The solemn occasion marked one of the first public appearances 
for the young royals at such a formal event. Prince William and Kate Middleton were novices. What? Excuse me? Prince William? No, but no, what? what? <clears throat> I mean, sorry. Um, Prince William and Kate Middleton were novices in handling their children in public appearances for the royal family. While the day began smoothly, a brief incident arose when George, then nine, appeared to pinch his younger sister, Charlotte, seven, prompting her to cry out in dis dis discomfort. This moment captured on live television drew attention not only for the children's behavior, but also for Camilla's immediate reaction. Witnesses noted that C C Camilla gestured sternly at Charlotte and quietly directed Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, to attend to her daughter. According to experts, lip readers, <laughs> Good. All right. All right. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Where am I again? According to expert lip readers, Camilla was heard instructing, take her as she, oh my, what a commanded voice. Take her as she sought to, as she sought to manage the situation discreetly. Was that discreet? Really? Okay. The interaction highlighted Camilla's role in guiding family decorum, decorum, especially during significant public events where the behavior of the future monarch is under close scrutiny. Oh, Lord. Ah, oh, really? So, the behavior of Prince William's children under Camilla's watchful eye Really? Really? I mean, do you folks believe any of this? Because I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what to think. I really don't. I was like, who, who, who heard us? Because someone heard us and was like, okay, we need to show that she's like in charge and these novice people, you know, like, the prince that was born a prince, um, he's a novice at being a prince. So um, the, the, the person who had an affair, well, I guess several affairs, who was getting her, oh gosh, I'm, my, my, my thoughts are going into language that is not appropriate for any time of the day. So, since this conversation is not closed doors, I am going to refrain from saying what I would really like to say and just continue. Despite this minor incident, George and Charlotte were generally well behaved throughout the lengthy proceedings with Charlotte even seen offering guidance to George at one point, advising him on proper protocol. Their relationship with their step-grandmother, ugh, Camilla, has been marked by moments of warmth and guidance, such as Camilla, su <laughs> supportive gesture with Charlotte. <sighs> I don't even want to continue, folks. Like, this is just nonsense. It really is. So I'm going to stop it right there. It's, do you, do you, do you remember? when that in when this whole situation did the thing that they're talking about there was a moment that was in the tablet press showing um prince charlotte princess charlotte like she seemed to be you know in tears or crying or was making a gesture towards her eyes and it was all over the place um if i, if I recall well it, it was all about look her upset prince charlotte is because her Great grandmother has passed, you know, poor Charlotte, look how she's showing emotions and this and that and whatever. But now they're telling us 
right? To fit that narrative into a, 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 I don't know what to call this piece, a, um, Camilla is, is, is the best monarch, is a person who knows, uh, gosh, I, I think, <laughs> I can't, I can't. Oh, please, decorum, Antonio, decorum, decorum, your language, please, your language, your language. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, baby Jesus, please provide me with the right words to finish this piece. Please, oh Lord. Okay. This article is evidence to show us that the ta tabloid press is just a bunch of uh, bull S-H-I-T. And no matter how way you turn it, no matter how you fry it, no matter how you cultivate it, it's still the same thing. And that people who may call themselves journalists, who write for these pieces of rags and trash, are actually storytellers that create and imagine situations based on probably real events, but they use their imagination to reimagine the situation. Oh my goodness, Lord Jesus, thank you. That wasn't bad. Thank you, baby Jesus. Happening. All right, I think I'm going to stop it there. Yeah, let's stop it right there. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much. And um, I hope you continue to have a fantastic weekend. I um, hope everything is going well. You're taking some time to just relax and take it easy. For those experiencing some of the heat that's been on and off, please make sure you stay hydrated. Please make sure you are staying indoors when you have to. I know in these summer times, you know, the barbecue and all that kind of stuff is fun to be outside and it's great. But for the person who is attending to the barbecue during the cooking, please take care of them to make sure that they're staying hydrated and all of that. Ah, you folks know, I love you all. Thank you so very much. Thank you for being here. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. Mwah. Adios, hasta luego. Hablamos más tarde. Bon, bon, <laughs> uh, ciao, and all the other stuff. Um, I was going to do, you know what? Tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll do um, comments. How about that? Yeah? And, and I'll start out with the comments that didn't make it to publication. How about that? And we'll have a little bit of a, I don't know. And I laugh, right? Because it, it's either I laugh or I cry. There's nothing in between. <laughs> laugh or cry. Um, that's it. Mwah. Ciao, ciao.